The time has come to tackle the project on the Thunderbird I have been dreading and I've been putting this off and putting this off as long as I've had these patch panels and that is replacing all of this material here. Well, not all of this material. I'm going to try and use as little of this as I possibly can in a reasonably sensible shape to replace this corner. Now, this is absolutely the worst one. The one on the other side really isn't so bad. We've already pulled out the interior and you can see through the bottom all the way into, well, not all the way in, but you can see underneath one of the window mounts where the light is coming in under here. Now, there is also some other work that needs to be done around this. Part of the back is obviously rusted out around here and some of the floor that joins this panel onto the sill right at the very bottom has gone. Those two bits I'm hoping are going to be relatively simple because they're just flat. So the only difficulty with them is going to be welding up to try and join them onto this panel on the inside, which I'm really not looking forward to either. Now, fortunately, pulling the interior out was fairly simple. Just uh, a few clips to get the seat back and the seat bed out and then pulling the seat belts themselves. And we've also pulled out all of the insulation that went around them. They had this really nasty like fiberglass. I'm not sure if it is fiberglass, might be rock wool. Either way, we've pulled all of that out because I really don't want that blowing around inside when we get the angle grinder out and generally just breathing it in will suck. So the patch panel goes all the way from the very bottom of the rocker, kind of as you would expect and goes right the way up to above this crease line that runs right along the length of the car. Now some rudimentary tapping along shows that all of this is pretty good and it's only when you get down here it's really not very secure or sound at all and obviously you can see where there is a lot of rust on the bottom. Although apparently none of it's particularly loose. There's also some Bondo that's been added on around the back of here. And whilst I am a fan of just cleaning up my crimes with a bit, little bit of uh, Bondo to, to make them go away, this is feels like about half an inch, sort of 10, 12 millimetres thick. And that is definitely a crime. There's also some evidence a little bit higher up as well, where there's about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe one to two millimetres of Bondo right up here. So I suspect this has been hidden for quite some time and has finally given up the ghost sometime before I got it. Now the back of the arch in the same area below this crease is also really, really bad, but we're going to deal with that later because that's essentially just one straight line, whereas this has multiple pieces to it. And unfortunately, with that, the time has come I need to start cutting bits out of this car that are very, very visible. Wish me luck. Well, that was quite destructive. And worse, all the way down the inside of this sill was all of this rust. So that was part of the inside. That's obviously part of the inside. I was right, there was about half an inch of uh, Bondo on there. We cut through that, that was up on this edge. Uh, I'm not sure which way around that was now, but yeah, there was a good half inch of Bondo in parts of it and just raking out all of this rust. That's the worst part of the filler that's been put in because that is basically pure filler with a bit of paint on the outside. So um, yeah, that was quite destructive. Maybe I should cast some of these pieces and some of this rust in, uh, in some resin for patrons. So if you're a patron, if you'd like a piece of genuine, authentic T-Bird rust, you might be able to be become a patron at this point and receive a piece in some resin. On the upside, we've managed to clean out as much as we possibly can. And there's actually a lot of solid metal behind here. We do need to do a lot of the internal metal as well. We need to put a panel across the inside of this edge and then another one here for the, these inner skins. And then we can put the, uh, the outer actual body panel back on. But it's mostly fairly simple shapes. It's not looking too bad. There are still little flanges that we can weld onto that I've managed to salvage off the old metal that are still really nice and strong and they've cleaned up really nicely. So we're just going to be able to spot weld onto that and use that as a brace or not spot weld, so we tack onto that using that as a brace to locate it. So it's not going to be absolutely millimeter perfect for how it came out of the factory, but then I'm not really that bothered. Well, the situation's a little bit worse than we hoped, but not as bad as we feared it could be. 
Uh, obviously, we had some rust on the outer panels that we've had to cut through and, and get at what's underneath. I don't think we really expected it to be quite so bad inside. We've cut away what looks like, I'm not sure if, it, if you might call it a frame rail or it might just be the inner sill or something, but it is pretty beefy in there. We've had to cut quite a lot out, which means we're making four new pieces of metal to go in because this is all stuff that we might be able to get off the shelf, but it's all thousands of miles away in America. So we're just going to make our own from bits of, uh, bits of sheet metal offcuts that we have left around. So you've got one piece already in on the inboard side, which I'm, I'm, I'm going to call just like the inside of the inner sill. We've cut off some of the outside of the inner sill and the bottom. So you're gonna, we've made up a few more pieces. This is going to be, this is going to slide in somewhere around here. He says clumsily trying to feed it into place. So that goes roughly there. And I've got a few more pieces around that I've immediately lost. Uh, I've got one that's going to be the outside of the inner sill there. And then obviously we're going to box in the back with a piece that we're going to shape up once these are all in. And then finally, we've got the new outer wing. It's going to patch on over the top of all of it. So I've got a lot of little tacks to put in now. And uh, hopefully we can get this done before nightfall. We're not going to get the other side done by the look of it. It's just a, a bit too much to do. But uh, if we can wrap this up, that'd be really, really nice. The steelwork ahead of the wheel is basically done, at least for the internal side. We're just waiting for that to cool down so we can put some panel seal on, put some paint on it, and then we can start work on the outer skin. But in the meantime, we're going to work on this skin at the back. Now, this is a double skin panel, and the inner panel is actually in remarkably good condition. It doesn't seem to have any holes in it or anything. I'm really quite surprised it's held up as well, considering how badly the one on the outside has. So we're going to have to cut along the top here, which we think is where the rust basically ends. It does go up quite high at the front here, um, but we're thinking we go along in one big, long, straight line. That will make life a little bit easier to try and cut the matching panel out of this one because it is a much bigger piece comp compared to the one at the front. So we're going to cut along this line. I put some painter's tape down just so that we get a nice straight edge all the way along. The other one I could freehand because it was a little bit more, um, well, it was a smaller panel for a start and it was a little bit of an odd shape where I wanted to cut out. But this one, nice straight line should be easy to replicate on this one. We are going to have to work out how we're going to separate it from the skin at the bottom because in here, you can see there's lots of bits of rust and this has previously been sealed up with filler, this bit. I actually can't get it out, it's so thick on the back here. It's, again, nearly half an inch, the same as it was at the front. It's really quite bad. At the back, it's all just packed full of rust. So yeah, all of this is gonna to have to come off fairly obviously, and we're gonna work out how we gotta get it off the inner skin at the bottom. So that's gonna be fun. Well, what a horror show that turned out to be. I thought this was looking like a reasonably good panel. This hole at the back, in fairness, started off as being a hole with a little rubber bung in it, so not all of that has come through, but it obviously has rusted out way bigger than this little bung was. This one at the front, however, is significantly worse because there is nothing here. Um, the reason why it looked like there was a lot more holding up at the front is because this body filler was crammed in. This is nearly an inch and a half thick, 35 millimeters, something like that. And it's just piled and piled in. It's just been pushed until it filled and continually pushed on and pushed on, pushed on just to make up the, the gap. Um, and then smoothed over and painted. And it's an absolute travesty. I'm probably gonna um, hang this in the studio, put it on the wall just as a testament to um, horrors, horrors that we find when trying to fix up cars. So we have a few more pieces that we need to make. I was really hoping we could just pop this one on the outside and we'd be good to go and get back on doing the front one. That is not gonna be the case. We're gonna to have to fabricate up a panel from this corner. Fortunately, the rust does stop just above where I made this cut. I'm very, very surprised and lucky with that. So we're just gonna make a panel that comes down across here, around up to this rib. This little strengthening rib is 
really nice and uh, strong. It's in good condition. So we're going to go up to the edge of that and around, down, and weld it onto this bottom lip. Now I've kept the bottom lip on here so that partially so that this stays together but i'm also going to cheat a little bit using that as my reference and as a good solid thick piece of steel running along the very bottom edge we can weld the new panel directly onto that and just tweak it in ever so slightly so i'm going to cheat a little way to do that but that is going to help massively with alignment so we're going to make this little panel weld it on down to here and that'll give us our front edge that we can build up to with the replacement panel on the outside then we're going to replace this little square in here in much the same way, probably the, the bottom of this rib down to here in another panel and then do another one down this end and see if we can drill a hole for, I've thrown the rubber bung away, um, for the little rubber bung to go in here. This hole, as I say, wasn't all just from rust. There was actually a little rubber bung that sat in here and then we can just roll round into the corner, clean the back up and then weld the corner in. Well, this is all dry, we can finally get on to the last bit of fixing up this panel and that is cutting down our patch panel, which is quite obviously oversized, to something a little bit more manageable which will fill in this gap. Now I actually wanted about a millimetre undersized because I've got some clamps which will hold the panels just slightly apart. That way we're filling the gap between the panels and joining them together rather than just be, uh, sort of balling up the weld on top or trying to put lots of power in that will melt the whole things and fuse them together. That would work really nicely with TIG but it's not going to work with MIG. So I'm going to cut this down because this is a little bit difficult to get a good representation of exactly where the lines are. So this is going to be, go oversized first. I don't jam it in the door and then I'll start trimming it down to get it much much closer. So that's the panel trimmed down to size and I've put a couple of these little panel clamps on and these work really really neatly. They have a removable backing block that goes through. It slides through that way you have your two pieces of material in, you tighten that up and it pinches them on the back of the panel. But obviously to get it out again, you can just slide that out and the panel comes out the front. So it's really, really useful. Unfortunately, the way the back of this panel is sat, when I tighten this one up, it's not quite sitting correctly. This one is absolutely perfect once this one's been slackened off just a touch. So we're going to get a tack in on this end or a couple of tacks in on this end and then we can rotate this around, take this off, tack it in again, and that will hold it in the right spacing because this is just a little bit too big at the moment. But it, I promise you, it does actually rotate round really nicely and fit in bob on. Well, I'm really happy with how the panel has come out. I've taken the welds back on the face of it so that they are almost level. I don't want to go any further through. I'm starting to hit the actual new metal of the panel itself and in some places the old metal on the car and I really don't want to burn through that and have to deal with another hole. So whatever it's like right now, that's how it's going to stay. There is still this dip down here where I was trying to fix a little burn area where the, uh, the metal was quite thin on the car and it ate back through with the weld I tried to build it up too quickly and it, it just put a little bit too much heat into what was at the time the unsupported part of the panel. So it's a little unfortunate, but the filler that's going to go on is going to be significantly better than what is probably nearly half a pound that came off from the back. So I don't feel anywhere near as bad as uh, whoever did it before really should feel. So with that on, it just needs attaching across the very bottom edge. That's just going to get um, stitched back in across the underside. And then we'll be sealing that up with panel seal. And then it'll have the same uh, wheel guard stuff that's under here. Or, well, the same stuff that we're going to replace the one under here with. Just to seal that in a little bit nicer. Now, I haven't done this edge as yet. I need to work out what I'm going to do because the profile is slightly different between the two. The faces line up really nicely, but the profile where the rubber strip fits is a little bit deeper on the new panel than the old. So I need to do something with that, but that's probably going to be a problem to deal with on another day. And we'll show you next time we come back on the Thunderbird what we actually did with that. So all that remains to do for today is put the other panel onto the back corner and we'll call this side done. Ding dong, we were wrong. We were quite confident last night when we filmed our last take with Aid there that we would have this thing tacked up before we went in and we'd be able to show you it in place this morning. That is not how it turned out because it turns out this is not the same shape as what we've cut off. 
Now we're not quite sure why, it could be because it's a reproduction piece and maybe the die was a little bit off, or it could be that although I'd ordered the right part, he might have been shipped one from like the year before or something, but one way or another, this thing doesn't quite fit right. It's kind of difficult to say what doesn't fit right because there's no real ground truth where we can say, okay, here it is in the right place and you can see it's too long or anything like that. It's, we can make it fit at the front and if we do uh, the curvature at the back is wrong and we can make it that the bottom edge of it is the right length by sort of setting it at some height or other and then saying, oh, well, you know, this bit's wrong or that bit's wrong. But none of these are like the true error, if that makes sense. Like there's just, you know, we can, we can put one thing in the right place and fit the rest around it. So we're gonna try and figure out a way that we can get this up that requires the least amount of fiddling to attach it to the car. Our current guess is if we tack the front on here, the front angle seems to be roughly right, and it's also too tall. So it actually comes down quite a bit further out the bottom of the car than it's supposed to. But at what would be the bottom line, so like if you take this plane out here and imagine where it cuts through here, there, this is the right length. So our guess is that this panel is actually just too long downwards and it tapers in too much there. But if we fit it up at the right height, uh, we can probably tweak the bend round at the back and cut the bottom off of it and then re-bend in the new bottom once it's been cut off. And we think that'll get us in roughly the right place. But it is a bit of a faff. But one way or another, that is unfortunately not gonna happen on this episode. We've gotta get the other panel off and compare and you know just squint at it and furrow our brows a lot and try and figure out what's up before we'll get back to you in a future episode of Pedalbox. Now, if you want to potentially buy some new patch panels for Aid's t bid here, if we can't make this one fit, jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. You can support us there from as little as a dollar a month. Every penny that we get through there does really, really help. It does all go into the projects, mostly into parts, sometimes into consumables, really boring stuff like welding wire and gas, that kind of thing. But it really does help us keep momentum up. It gives us a little place where we can go if we say, oh man, we need a new fuel tank for the kit car or anything like that. We've got a little pot there that we can, uh, we can dip into for it. So it really does. A lot of it comes from you guys and it is very, very helpful. Any Patreon support also gets you a discount on the Pedalbox merch store at shop.pedalbox.show where you can buy one of these snazzy hats. I think I'm wearing one of the relatively clean ones today. Now, if you know why this panel doesn't fit, if you've ever run into this before, please jump in the comments and let us know because any advice on trying to make this work will be really appreciated. It'll cut down the amount of time Aid has to spend staring at the other panel and trying to figure out what's going on. And along with that, please like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, ring the bell because we are getting quite a few episodes out lately. We've got a pretty good tempo on at the minute, which I gotta be honest is kind of surprising because I don't even live here anymore.